What's up everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're taking a look at a very interesting topic. This guy in the UK, he managed to create some kind of ancient uh, machine that has the capacity to lift really heavy objects. So he's thinking that this could be a possible way that the Egyptians as well as the individuals that did Stonehenge were able to lift all of those giant uh, stones. It actually seems rather plausible from what I've read in the article. Um, one engineer, uh, I don't remember his name, but this engineer guy said uh, that basically he's normally very skeptical about such things, but he felt that this particular, uh, I guess, machine was rather plausible. And so I, I thought that was really cool. And who knows, maybe this could lead to some further developments in regards to how the pyramids were built and how uh, Stonehenge was actually set up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what we have in store here. Yeah, look at this thing. Now, looking at this drawing, it looks like some stuff might be a little bit off scale. I mean, either that or it's just the drawing is just done in like a weird fashion. So, like, look at this guy. Like, look how much bigger he is. So is that the key? Like, they just had like some massive giant dude that was able to lift everything. <laughs> uh, speaking of giants, there's another article that I, I was taking a look at. I'm going to read through it again. It's supposedly about some sort of uh, giant individuals that they found in Europe I think they're like seven to nine feet tall it's kind of wild but we'll, we'll take a look at that perhaps later all right so huge objects could have been moved by a lifting machine at Stonehenge in Egypt a history-loving carpet fitter has recreated an ancient machine to solve the mystery of how Stonehenge was built so I'm, this is pretty cool check this out Stephen Tasker, 66, believes the long-forgotten machinery would have been used to transport the huge stones 180 miles. This guy almost has like a meme uh, presence to him. So like right here, visits Stonehenge, you know, figures out how Stonehenge is made in a day or something. Stephen Tasker on a day trip to Stonehenge when he was likely thinking about his lifting machine and how it was used first in the UK and how it was likely the Egyptians... Uh, it was likely the Egyptians visited Britain in search of scientific solutions for moving huge statues and building the pyramids. Um, I, I think this uh, subtitle here, whatever, is just uh, some kind of, I don't know, uh, guesswork on the author. I don't know if there's any evidence of Egyptians coming to Europe. There might be that I'm not aware of, but I don't really think so. At least like ancient Egypt, you know. I'm going to try and get this microphone situated perfect. I think that should still be pretty good. All right, he came up with a theory on a visit to Egypt as he wanted to explain how the pyramids were built. Stephen decided to build the rocking structure with his grandson to see if they could fit, if they could lift heavy stones. The mechanism features a circular board in the middle of wooden planks that sit on top of rockers and wooden feet. Stephen of Yarnhader, Mid Wales, says it could move any weight and may solve the Stonehenge mystery. That's really, that's pretty cool. I mean, get, get on this guy for actually coming up with this. He said it may look like something out of last of the summer wine, but we've lifted a third of a ton with it and theoretically it could move any weight. I tied rockers below a plank of wood and try to try and work out how they could have been used. By using pivot points, I could counterbalance a 60 kilogram roll of carpet on top and by using the rockers, walk it across the road. Stevens' theory could explain how stone circles from the Preseli Hills and Pembrokeshire were moved to Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire. He explained his ideas to Dr. Campbell Price, curator of the UK's largest Egyptology collections at Manchester Museum. Dr. Price was impressed with this theory and said the efficient movement of, a large num of large numbers of ancient monuments has never been fully explained. He said Steve's experiments give a different perspective into how ancient people were able to plan paths of least resistance and to manipulate natural forces. Stephen also believes the machine is referenced in the Old Testament when Ezekiel describes a vision of God being transported on cherubim. Stephen tested out the prototype with his grandson and an important element where the ball bearings such as those found at ancient sites stop the statue from sliding off. And I, as you can see here, there's like a variety of illustrations. I still don't understand what they're trying to portray with this one. 
All right, you got this dude just standing up here. He's like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm standing up here. Let's go ahead and slide this stone around. And then this guy is just going to town on some rock or something. And this guy's over here with a scythe, it looks like. Yeah, or maybe a hoe. And this dude is like a giant. He's probably doing all the work. But they don't detail why this guy's a giant. And how Stephen believes the machine would have looked. He believes the Egyptians could have kept animal fat and head cones to be used as a lubricant on the stone rollers. That's a pretty good idea. The cherubim, cher, cherubim include four wings and feet shaped like the sole of a calf's foot. Stephen said the feet are an important part of the machine because the load center of mass is retained over them. It gives the impression the machine is defying gravity, but like any trick of the eye, a clown leaning forward with his big shoes, it looks like magic. Steven estimates the machine would be able to travel 1.5 miles a day, meaning the Stonehenge stones would have taken months to transport. Engineer Sean Whitehead, this is the engineer guy that I was talking about, who led the Jedi, I guess that's how you say it, D Jedi, Jedi, <laughs> robotic exploration of the Great Pyramid said, I'm often approached by people who have their own ideas about why and how these great structures were built. I'm careful not to dismiss any of these without a little thought, but most can be shown to be unworkable or impractical. However, Stephen's theories on how massive objects could have been moved demonstrate a very creative and practical engineering line. And that's the end of the article there, but I, I still think that this is rather um, interesting because it doesn't seem too far-fetched. Now, does... You know, does this mean that they specifically use or they use this specific tool? You know, perhaps not. But I think it gives you know, credence to the idea that they could have used something like this to show that it is plausible for them to be able to move such large structures. And uh, who knows what they would have done. I don't think anyone knows what uh, Easter Island did. They probably used some kind of logs or something, I guess, to roll things around. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. Figured I'd share that with you guys. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you think that uh, something like this would have been implemented by the people at Stonehenge or the Egyptians. It's kind of weird that we don't really have, like we have a little bit, you know, actually a good amount of historical uh, documentation of the pyramids and stuff that was going on over there. Even though I think the pyramids are probably way older than we give them credit for. Because I think supposedly now they're saying that the Sphinx is like over 10,000 years old. So that's, that's pretty wild. But Stonehenge, there's not really hardly anything about it. It's like more of a mystery. I wonder why that is. But, uh, yeah, so uh, feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And until next time, uh, take care.